a particular body part is unwell hmm so what do we do hmm so we look at it and say i love you hmm and the body part is listening so if right. it is not working properly it will start functioning all right great because it suddenly realize oh that there is somebody in this world that loves me lovely and love never goes waste so that is how soul the, there is the concept of soul healing that you see first you connect everything has a soul everything has intelligence there are these 60 trillion cells in a body and each cell is so intelligent it is performing so many functions mm. any computer we may create but that computer is not going to be as intelligent as a single cell of our body mm. right so who has given that intelligence to that cell that cell is born intelligent so it is not that only humans with this brain here are intelligent every single thing same thing is living mm -hmm. so if we can really connect with with the the any anything you know like your shoes your clothes your towels your bed your chair if you just give it love over a period of time you will find that you are able to communicate with it it is also communicating so everything is living so when we give our love to something that becomes helpful rama ji how do you give love it's a very basic question you have to have love you first you love yourself hmm so when you love yourself you know look at your image when you get up look at yourself in the mirror hmm tell yourself i love you and a smile hmm. it will make a tremendous change Mm -hmm. and we love because if we do some sadhana or some practice whereby we go high in energy and frequency then it becomes possible to love mm -hmm. so people who are always caught in this negative thought mm -hmm. or patterns or behavioral patterns like one who is you know the moment you think of something that we all have done something or the other which has been very wrong in our lives Mm. True. The moment we hold that thought, oh, I did something wrong, our energy goes down immediately. Mm -hmm. When we harbor resentment, when we harbor anger, the energy goes down. And if people who are very angry or very negative, you may have noticed that when you if they come to your room. you you have been in government service you know there are a lot of people who come to visit you know government officials right. so there are people when they come and sit in your room after 5 mm. minutes you don't want them to be there anymore true you want them to go away mm. because they are these negative personalities they are mm. energy guzzlers and if they are there in your presence they will draw your energy out and you will be left absolutely dull and at the same time there are some people who are right. full. so when they come in your presence you feel uplifted you you like their presence you like to talk to them you want them to hold on and be there for a little more a few few minutes more so yeah. so that is the play of energy so when we rise in higher energy higher awareness mm -hmm. we become people who are sought after Yeah, yeah. So we are able to give something to other people, and other people also can give something to us. It's a mutual thing. Mm. <clears throat> so to be able to love, it's not that all that difficult. But first, we must learn to love ourselves. Okay. The way we are. That I is. I think there's a very, very, uh, you know, very great resentment. Supposing you have not. Done something like I lost my mother, uh -huh. and before that she told me two days before that don't go back to Bombay, and I came, and then during that time I lost her. So uh, that is one thing I can never forgive myself. So it is like this that it has happened. Mm. Can you undo this? 
No. No. So what can you do? Hmm. It is like it's a very practical question. We all have this this last chances in life. Mm. Like something we could have done, we didn't do. Mm. Mm. But the thing is like this: that you think that you have lost your mother. Mm. Have you really lost your mother? Yeah, that's what I keep consoling myself that she's still with me. No, don't console. That is the truth. Okay. Consolation is like. you a child is crying and you give him a lollipop mm. so don't offer yourself a lollipop mm -hmm. offer yourself correct understanding mm. this is a universe in which there are all these souls mm. today we are say how many of us 21 of us sitting here mm. maybe 10 years most of us are senior citizens 10 years from now we may not be there mm. but are we not going to be there hmm 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 because what will drop this body will drop hmm hmm if the soul goes out the soul if, if the journey has not been completed the soul will be looking for another physical body hmm if the journey has been completed the soul will be sitting somewhere in bliss hmm hmm but the soul will be there hmm hmm Now the thing is like this that your mother has not gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. She is very much in this universe. Mm -hmm. So how can you serve her? You did not serve her for those two days. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of chance. Mm -hmm. But now can you serve her? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to serve her? Mm -hmm. So as long as you indulge in thoughts of guilt. Mm -hmm. and shame that oh i did not do this for my mother i miss this opportunity it is so bad mm -hmm. it is so sad now what are you doing you are doing things that are going to pull down your energy right do you think your mother will be very pleased to see you disturbed and unhappy mm -hmm. no because the mother has not gone anywhere Mm -hmm. the moment you think of the mother your connection with her is there mm -hmm. so if you become unhappy if you become sad if your energy levels go down she is going to be unhappy right and if she is unhappy her journey in the other life will be impeded there will right. be blocks okay so you are by your own Behavior, you are in making things more difficult for her wherever mm. she is. Mm. So, mm. are you being a good daughter? No. No. Mm. So, mm. what does a good daughter do? Mm. A good daughter will always bless the mother. Mm -hmm. Ma, thank you so much for being <laughs> there in my life. You mm. gave me, you lent your womb to me to be born. Mm. For nine months you carried me. Mm. How can I ever repay that debt? Mm. So when you remember her with gratitude mm. and bless her, mm. see you can say, "Oh, I I was unable to take care of you for those two days when perhaps you needed me most." But I am going to set aside time and pray for you every day. Mm. When I do some practices. i will make you in my mind i will make you sit by my side okay so that What? whatever i do you receive the benefit of that wonderful great and that is the service that we can do to our parents okay to our ancestors mm. Mm. we cannot repay the ancestors they have given us the dna with which we have been born mm. Mm. so their debt must be paid but how can we pay mm. no google pay goes there mm. no money can be transferred to their bank accounts mm. but we can transfer our love and respect and gratitude to their accounts where they are, wherever they are and that is what is going to serve them mm -hmm. because when we remember them with love 
their energy levels will go high hmm and if their energy levels go high then whatever future life they are having their their passage will be easy okay they will okay. Encounter, encounter less problems less impediments this But is wonderful if, Hmm. Uh, if we become unhappy hmm. we are making it very difficult for them it is okay. not to be done it is not being a good daughter at all okay okay yes. wonderful thank you so much this has been troubling me for so many years uh, this is why yeah. we are here actually this whole purpose of healing is to to rise above these considerations hmm. the society places a lot of premium on grief if a husband dies a wife is supposed to cry and get into a serious depression if a wife dies the husband is supposed to cry and get into a serious depression the society does not teach that don't get into depression because by getting into depression you are not serving that loved one so if you really want to serve the loved ones remember them with gratitude remember them with love and that is how they will be served a great master once told me he asked me this question that he said look you see these newly born babies they are lying in their cribs or in their beds they have no conscious memory and you see the baby laughing joyously some babies keep laughing there are other babies that keep crying over and over again and he asked me do you know why does it happen like this that some babies are always very happy they keep laughing and there are other babies who that keep crying and then he explained he said the baby that is laughing is the baby who is being remembered with great love and gratitude by those whom he has left behind wow so because they are praising him they are remembering him they are thanking him you know when they do that this baby gets into a state of joy and he laughs wow but if the baby has come from a family or some friends who are always grieving about it mm. they say oh my god we are so unhappy we are so unhappy this unhappiness comes to him and he starts crying mm. he, he, he 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 sort of gets permeated by their grief mm -hmm. isn't it true that when we go and meet our friends you know somebody is in a state of great grief you be with that person for some time and after some time that grief is starts coming seeping inside you mm. or if you are in the company of a person who is very joyous you know there is a very joyous atmosphere you go to a place where everybody is laughing making merry and you suddenly even if you are sad or you have have low energy levels you suddenly find that the energy levels have gone up Mm. so this is what we can do mm. and this is the easiest form of service that is why in hindus you know they have this pitrupaksh you know that a service to the ancestors there is a tradition that at a particular time in a year you <clears throat> offer something some <clears throat> you do some charity something in the name of your ancestors but this is outer ritual just by connecting to with the ancestors in thought we can offer them our love and gratitude and that will be the biggest service right and i had a very live experience i lost my parents early mm. and maybe 20 years later or more both my parents appeared in a dream and they told me that look our last rites were not done properly oh so you have to do something about it <clears throat> so i took it as a command and in hindus you know the 
this, this shraddha or this uh, rituals can be done at any time. It has to be on a kind of a no moon day, so one and a half days. And I was posted in Kolhapur and there is a place nearby, Narsobhavadi, where these rituals are done. So it was very easy. But somehow, for some strange reason, whenever this no moon would come, something or the other would happen in the office or maybe in my personal life or some, something related with my wife and son, I couldn't do it. Six months passed away. And I was feeling very restless from within that I, my parents have asked me to do something. It is a ritual. I'm not able to do it. And then, uh, you know, I, I shared this with uh, Professor Mungle, who was a master. So he told me I was going for some work to Solapur. Where he said, you go to Gangapur, which is a place nearby. And he said, there is a small pond which is called the Papa Vinashi Tirth. So it is a pond where if you have a bath, you know, your sins are remitted, dissolved. So he said, you go there, have a bath there. And while you are having the bath, you imagine that your parents have come with you. Mm. I went to that place. The outside temperature was 44 degrees. Celsius and this pond had been reduced to a mud pot. It was very dirty and smelly. So I did not go in. I said, if I am feeling re repulsed by this, how can I imagine that I have brought my parents along and they are having a bath here? So I didn't do that. So I came back to Kolhapur, mentioned this to Professor Mungli, and he said, I will tell you the easy way out now. In the mornings you meditate. You make your father sit on your one side and the mother on the other and make an intention. Let the benefit of this meditation go to my parents. Those were the times when I was very fond of chanting Shri Guru Gita. Mm -hmm. which is a text about the Guru principle and said you chant the Guru Gita in the mornings, make an intention, each time you chant, make an intention that let the benefit of this chant go to my parents. You go to a temple or a holy place, when you go there, make an intention that I have not come alone, my parents have come with me and let the benefit of this visit go to them. And I used to go and meet Professor Mungle every once every week. And he said, you come to my house every week. When you start climbing the steps to my house, make this intention that I have not come alone for the darshan of Professor Mungle. My parents are with me and let the benefit of this darshan go to them. Mm. I did this for two months. Then I had another vision of my parents and they both looked very happy. So I went to Professor Mungle and mentioned this to him <clears throat> that I had another dream and my parents looked very happy. So he just closed his eyes and then after a minute he opened them and he said, whatever you had to do as a son for your parents, that service you have performed. Wow. You are out of their debt. Wow. So it was a kind of a living proof for me mm -hmm. that just by holding our parents, our uncles, our relatives, anybody whom we want to serve, mm -hmm. just we hold them in our in thoughts and intention and whatever we are doing, we say, this is offered to you as a service. You are included. And right. they will receive it. Because this world is a manifestation of thought. No, I want to ask you whether we should intend that the benefits go 
exclusively to them or should we also if be you really want to, to help them yes you make that intention let the benefit go exclusively to them you want to share part of the benefit with them then you say let the benefit go to them also it is your intent what is it okay. that you want okay so whatever you will intend hmm. your intention will be carried out okay hmm. because there is a there, somebody wants to establish a factory now a factory is just a thought but he he is working for it he goes assiduously after it so what happens he has some idea what kind of thing he is going to produce what will happen so he has to look for a kind of a business plan he has to look for what, how things will work out for him then he has to look for a plot of land he will look for some loans or some finances he will bring somebody who is an architect who will design it somebody will make it <clears throat> then so all these things go on one intention that there has to be a factory or there has to be a business like this it works if that intention is strong it keeps working and it will bring together whatever is needed that is why the clarity of intent is very important how strong is your intent so if there is this strong intent i want to serve my parents mm. i am so grateful and actually each one of us have to be very grateful to our parents mm. Mm. they have brought us they have allowed yeah. us to be here in this world absolutely if the mother had refused to carry us in her womb then we would not be here Mm. on this planet at this time mm. so it is like this that we have to serve, serve them we have to really take care of them but we can take care of them just by our intent right and by remembering with them with love and gratitude mm. lovely there are so many times you know when parents are very difficult we have may have had some very strong difference of opinion but <clears throat> when we have this understanding we begin to see that whatever they were saying they were guided for our by their cons- concept of our welfare so maybe you know what they had their own ideas their own belief systems and according to that belief system or idea they wanted things for us in a particular way maybe it didn't match with what we knew or what we thought or what we wanted because each soul has its own journey <clears throat> but when we have this understanding then we always say whatever you did it was to the best of your understanding and your intention and i appreciate you for that so a lot of staying some parent has been very harsh difficult whatever the sting goes out of that relationship and it becomes it matures into love so in the same way we can look at life we all have had you know difficult relationships but when we look at every soul that we have encountered as a manifestation of the divine god lives inside each one of us as us so every soul is essentially divine but that soul is acting according to its own belief systems or whatever so if we recognize this then we can wish them well and let them go that is where the concept of forgiveness comes ki we may or two may have made many mistakes in our lives so we ask for forgiveness and there are those who have done something wrong against us and we we forgive them so that is how it goes so this karmic debt on both sides gets cancelled or cleared <clears throat> and the soul becomes free the, the bondage becomes free uh, it dissolves so thank you for asking this question because this is something very close to my heart <clears throat> 